next, he created the most frightening film ever made. Then, he took his unique vision of terror one step further. Now, George A. Romero takes us out of the night, beyond the dawn, and into the darkest day of horror the world has ever known. Day of the Dead. There have to be survivors in Washington. Oh, my. They have ass. more sophisticated shelters than this one. Oh, there have to be people in those shelters who know about us, who know where we are. With no radio contact, they'll come looking for us. I said shut up! They can be tricked into being good little girls and boys. The same way we were tricked into it. On the promise of some reward to come. What the fuck is wrong with you people? They're dead! They're fucking dead, and you want to teach them tricks? They have to be rewarded, Captain. Why else will they do what we want them to do? I don't want them to do anything but drop them! <laughs> George A. Romero's Day of the Dead, the most eagerly awaited day in horror film history. The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Gapfest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to Scarefest Television, original broadcast date, September 22nd, 2023, special super duper episode tonight. First of all, everyone, join me in welcoming our junior co-host, Joanna Hockstetter. Hi, everybody. Glad to be and here. Now, for the record, when I asked you to co-host, I did, did not occur to me how hard it would be to type your fucking name in. Every time I've got to uh, do a banner, so I'm just saying that um yeah that's that that that's a, that's a lot of letters, a lot of letters. Our guest tonight is Mr. John Amplis from Day of the Dead and a whole bunch of other movies that I actually watched. John, yeah. I was telling first of all, everybody, we should have just recorded what was going on before the show because for 30 minutes, me and John just had a big time, and I want to say. You all, I, and I'm famous for not doing my research. I have watched damn near, I have, except for one movie, everything I could find online or on, on streaming services that this man was in, I have watched in the last seven days. So, I'm prepared. Good, yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah, but it was hard, John, and you know it. You talked about it with me. <laughs> um, Okay, first, uh, let's just get into it here. Okay, uh, now, uh, okay. before we start with John, though, I need to make an announcement here. Yes, at the 30-minute mark, bottom of the hour, I will be announcing a cancellation. I will also be announcing a really, really good celebrity name to balance things out. But the amazing thing is all of you mind readers, you psychics on Facebook that already know who this person is, who I did not find out about until roughly noon today. So, it's going to be an interesting <laughs> announcement period. Now, um, okay, let, let's just go ahead. Uh, uh, John, uh, yeah. I guess pretty much when you came on the scene, 
was uh, uh, Martin, right? Yes, the first uh, film I did with George was Martin. He, um, I was a, I, I was an older student. I was 27 when we shot Martin. Uh, it was the year I graduated from college. Uh, George came to the Pittsburgh Playhouse where I was going to school, Point Park University, uh, and saw a production I was in called Philemon. Um, Philemon is probably best well known for its um, playwrights uh, 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 who just went out of my head. Anyway, it was a, <laughs> uh, by the people that uh, wrote The Fantastics, one of the longest running off-Broadway productions ever. Um, in any case, he came to see the production. He and I talked uh, a little bit after the show. He said he had a script that he was thinking about, and he's having seen my, my performance in this play, uh, thought I might be good for the title role if, if in fact, he did do a remake, a, a rewrite. So he went away and did do that rewrite. And then a few months later, I got a call and he offered me the lead in Martin. Mm -hmm. So um, that was George and my first um, get together. Um. Okay, now you were in you you you, you obviously with with the with the with the films that I did with George. I well, can... what a, I, the the follow up question to that is okay. Now you stayed with George a pretty damn long time. You did a lot of yeah. his movies. Did yeah. I, this is something I, I I I was just wondering. Did his to the actor did his directorial style change over the years, or was he always just George Romero. He was, he was always pretty much uh, George Romero. He was, um, George is um, a very kind and generous uh, player. He is, um, he's talented in many areas of filmmaking. He is a fantastic editor. He did all of the editing for Martin. Um, uh, Pat Booba came in and I think helped him a little bit with that, some of that. On the first day of shooting, um, he had set the camera in place, and um, his assistant at that time was Mike Bornick. And George stepped away from the camera before we even rolled, and asked Michael if he wanted to if he wanted to shoot. And Michael jumped at the chance, and from that point on. Uh, for many of the movies that I worked on with George, uh, Mike was his cinematographer. So Mike became the cinematographer, which gave George the freedom just to direct. Uh, and uh, off we went, off to the races. After, um, after, after Martin was Dawn of the Dead, um, I think after that was uh, Night Riders, uh, then Creep Show, um, Day of the Dead. I'm leaving something out. <laughs> the, uh, real quick follow before I kick it over uh, to Joanna. Was Tom Sabini ever young? <laughs> he looks exactly the same in Martin as the last movie I saw him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. In fact, that was Tom's first. Uh, film with George as well. He looks story, 50 years old. <laughs> the story about Tom is that um, he went and uh, after I had been cast, he didn't know that, ha that that had happened. He took his portfolio down to the offices where George was working out of and, um, and said, I want to audition for Martin. And he had to, George had to tell him Sorry, dude, that was already, that's already taken. But he showed George his uh, portfolio and uh, he signed, he signed him up uh, immediately to do the special effects. 
And so um, that was, Martin was George, I mean, um, Tom and my first film work with George. Joanna, over to you. <laughs> Hi. I am so happy that you're here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Well, you know, you've gotten the chance to work with like so many people, talented people and awesome, great people. So who is somebody that maybe you haven't had the chance to work with that you would like to? Oh, gosh, golly. <laughs> that's, that's a hard question. I, I don't know. I, I You know, get, I'm going to need a minute or two to to have somebody pop into my head. Um, I admire almost every actor because it takes a lot of guts to do it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, right off the top of my head, I can't I can't come up with uh, a special person. You know, I will before. The, how about this? I will before the uh, before our talk is over. Give okay. Me a, yeah, maybe maybe I shouldn't have started with that one. Maybe I should have asked something else. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I love actors, so um, I, I'm I'm willing to work with almost anybody. <laughs> okay, well, right on. <laughs> and I guess another thing I'm definitely wondering is, you know, just being a horror fan and then just being in this community and all my friends that are just love horror. We also really love metal music. So I'm kind of wondering, I was like, well, how do all the people in the industry, so what kind of, you know, what are your musical preferences? See, I'm more a jazz guy. Uh, rhythm and blues. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I go more in that direction. Rhythm and blues. I grew up on Motown, of course. Okay, uh, and so rhythm and blues is a has has had a big uh, influence on me uh you know people and two also people uh other people from the 60s like Joplin and uh people like that are are kind of you know feed my soul uh mm -hmm. to a great degree um but jazz is jazz you know uh, uh, Miles Davis and and people of that nature I'm not really a metal guy <laughs> Uh, and, and and honestly, don't know a lot about it. I mean, unless you consider like Led Zeppelin metal or not, I don't know if they are. Uh, you know, I could, yeah, a lot, a lot of the um, probably uh, '70s and '80s uh, folks would be my would be my uh, area. Sixties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties. You know, um, I, I like stuff now, though, too. I, there's a lot of performers I like now. But, um, yeah, I'm a little, um, I, I need something a little softer uh, for the ears. <laughs> it's so funny, because when I thought of that question, I was like, you know, I'm trying to prove a theory here. And I was like, I guarantee you he's a jazz guy. Just after watching oh, you and learning more about you, I was like, I, I guarantee it. <laughs> that's I'm old. <laughs> very cool i love that um, back to you wes okay let's go ahead and take our first commercial break and when we come back we'll be talking more with mr john <laughs> amplis horror movie fan four Life on Facebook. Find us for watch parties for news for memes for friends. For life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us.
And welcome back, everybody, to Scarepest TV. We're talking with a John Amplis. Now, I'm just going to through your IMDb, because I put so much work into this. This this next one, we both agree it was a painful experience. <laughs> Toxic Zombies. Yeah. Now, see, now when I watch Toxic Zombies, and I'm going to tell you, that was the most cliche. Late 70s, it was released in 1980. Yeah, that movie reeked of the '70s so badly that I was sure you were going to say disco when when um. <laughs> well, disco was very popular when it was made. I think it was oh, yeah. made in the summer of '77. So, um, yeah, disco was a big deal. The Studio Fifty Four was still in operation uh, so, at that point. So, did you learn to disco dance? No, I was never a disco guy. <laughs> I did. I, I I was taken to a couple of discos, but I just kind of stood around and watched for the most <laughs> part. <laughs> now it's, of course, not to make a show about me, but I, now see now I, we did what we called disco dancing in a in 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 high school because I graduated in eighty two, and mm -hmm. uh, but years later I went and took actual dance lessons and learned how to do it right. And, nice. And, and I learned how badly I was doing it back in 1982. So that was another thing. Um, okay, you went. Okay, then you, uh, now. Okay, I'm going to throw Night Riders out there, but yeah, it was that was a good movie. But you're, I'm sorry, Whiteface wasn't in it very much. Uh, well, I he was probably in it more than ended up on screen. Well, yeah. So. Um, but I, I was given two two opportunities, two two roles, uh, and George asked me to pick one. Uh, the first one, one of them was Whiteface, and the second one, and I can't remember the character's name, but it was played by Randy Kovitz, who ended up being the the lover of the kind of MC of the. Um, okay. You, you, yeah. you follow what I, yeah. who I mean, and um, I chose I chose Whiteface, and the reason I did uh, was that I thought, well, number one, it didn't have any; he had no lines. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. A little easier and, on the. And number two, it was a ten-week contract. So to get a 10-week contract on a movie with no <laughs> line, that's pretty hard to pass up. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, and maybe more firstly, was that I, I thought because of the white face and uh, he was mysterious and he, he, he never spoke and he and people would wonder where did he come from and, and what's he doing is he a runaway is he you know so i had to give him a little backstory of of something um to make it more interesting at least more interesting to me um so i chose that role in, instead of the other uh and i'm glad i did i think uh white face you know, he gets to save a baby. He, uh, you know, he, he he ran around with the coolest guy in the camp. Uh, you know, the, um, what was his name? Uh, Brother Blue uh, was his mentor and caretaker, uh, who was a really hip guy and was exactly on screen what he was in life. He was a poet and a storyteller. And uh, that's how he made his living. And he was a tremendous guy, just a wonderful, wonderful human. So if that answers your question. It, it, it does. I just, I just like I like poking at celebrities. What can I tell you? No, please um, do. Because um, so cool. honestly, I want to call the Booth brothers right now and tell them if you have any parts that there's <laughs> no lines, it had never occurred to me just to literally go after the parts that you don't have to do anything. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it over to Joanna. Uh, okay, and then I'll, but when we come back, I'm talking about creep show. All righty, 
<laughs> Hello, <laughs> <Boogie Nick. laughs> Any chance you any more any actors or anybody else pop into your mind that you'd like to work with? <laughs> Make something <laughs> up. Okay. So, well, I mean, yeah, it'll come. I promise. Right, you right. I'll come. I'll something else then. <laughs> I just wanted to ask before we forget, but so I always love watching the behind the scenes, um, any kind of you know, fun experiences about all the, especially all the special effects and everything. So I was wondering, like behind the scenes, or were there any just really memorable moments that stick out in your mind or even like kind of bloopers, anything funny that, you know, you'd like to share with us? Oh, gee whiz. Uh, 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 well, uh, I, we haven't talked about it. Uh, he said we're going to talk <laughs> about Creep Show. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Savini, I, I, I had a week, I had a week of going under the process of getting the makeup, Savini doing all of the makeup. I had to sit under plaster and he made the mask and then he had to make the, so I did a week of that and then went away. And then, uh, when it was time to shoot, I came back. And um, I put all of this stuff on and it fit beautifully. It all worked. I could breathe. I could open, open the mask's mouth and make it move and all of that stuff. Now, the first shot you see of, of dead Nate is what I call him, uh, is he comes up out of the ground and you see maggots all over his face right oh yeah 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 and so um i'm telling this story on myself um george said <laughs> he gave me a choice um you can you can it could be you under the mask or with the maggots or it could be someone else and I said, well, I think it would be much better if it were someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so the me. first, yeah, I forget the young woman's name who did it, but she was a, uh, she was working on the film and she volunteered. And so the very first shot you see of him with the maggots is this wonderful woman under my mask uh with maggots crawling around so oh, wow. yeah i uh i throw myself under the bus <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she a coward, a total coward, um <laughs> that uh yeah I, I couldn't handle it i just i just couldn't handle it i hear you yeah, I'm, you <laughs> I'm 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 ashamed of myself. <laughs> no. It was your call and you made it. So uh, there you go. I shouldn't have given me a choice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> right. So yeah, that's something. Okay. Uh, I like that. That was awesome. But okay. uh yeah, I worked with with Tom on every movie we made. You know, Tom was our special effects guy. Uh, and uh, just a great guy and easy to work with and, um, you know, lovable and funny. Very awesome. So I hope that helps. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah, definitely. That was a good one. I was hoping for something like that. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Okay. Then and I then... won't say anything about skinny dipping during Night Riders. Oh, you're not going to tell us? Dang. <laughs> I was like, I'm yeah, I'll just say that it may have gone on. <laughs> oh. Well, I know it did with uh, uh, Ed. Uh, well, it, I mean, <laughs> yes, that's true. But this wasn't on screen. This was skinny dipping back at the hotel. <laughs> uh, Once again, so 70-ish. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Free love. <laughs> so, I guess after all your experience, who would be your favorite for icon, villain, what have you? Well, I, I'm going to stay within the Romero family. I'd have to say 
my favorite would probably be Lori Cardell. Um, I think uh, Lori was one of the first female heroines in a horror film um, that uh, that was not a screen queen, that was a true a true heroine and a uh, strong character. Um, and, uh, and her work, um, her work, I think is, is remarkable as it shows on screen as well. I've worked with Lori in a couple of other little movies too. We were talking about it earlier. Uh, she and I did a movie called No Pets that, um, uh, Tony Buba, who is a Romero guy as well, um, uh, wrote, uh, filmed, um, in 1993, I want to say, uh, and we went to the London uh, Film Festival for that um, in '94. So, but Lori, uh, Lori stands alone, I think, in terms of um, strong, excellent performance in a horror film. I will also say that um, Howard Sherman who played Bob in Day of the Dead um, was remarkable to watch. Uh, he did such a beautiful job. I, I think it, I think his Bob stands up there with, with Karloff as Frankenstein um, in, in terms of, in terms of character creation, you know. Uh, my first day of shooting on Day of the Dead was being in that room with him, starting to learn shaving and listening to the telephone. And, and it was just all coming from Howard. Howard improvised the majority of that uh, particular scene. And uh, so I, I, I'm a big fan of Howard Sherman's. And uh, so there's two. <laughs> Yes, oh, I love that. I'm very awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we'll go back to Wes. Yep, sure. Let's yeah, let's go ahead and uh, uh, we'll go ahead and give a shout out to our featured vendor or sponsoring vendor of the night, Hedge Witch Hall. Tease with intent, and that's T E A S. Tease with intent. They um. Okay, Chelsea over at Hedge Witch Hall. She calls herself an entrepreneur, a nerd, a hedge witch, and a tea enthusiast. And she's dedicated to helping you bring the magic back to adulthood. Um, catch her at the Central Kentucky Mystical Market. Catch her at Scarefest. This girl was born and raised in Kentucky with a penchant for travel and trouble. And she has put it all into tea, if you can picture that. Helping you find your own moment of magic at hedgewitchhall.com. Hedgewitchhall.com. A sponsoring vendor of Scarefest 2023. Okay, wait a minute. Before you flip it over on the cancellation, nobody said his name. You all suck. Tell me you know who it is. Cancellation for Dennis O'Hare. Dennis O'Hare. Now, I know we will get the typical flood of people who is only... They were only coming to Scarefest for Dennis O'Hare. I understand that is like all of you, but we, it does happen. My understanding, Dennis, uh, it had something to do with a play. Uh, so it was work-related this time. Um, there's still a SAG strike going on, but Dennis did have something come up with a play that is apparently he signed up for that he's going to have to go to that. So Dennis O'Hare is canceled. But to replace Dennis, we're announcing Alexandria Breckenridge. Now, this is Alexander Breckenridge from American Horror Story, from The Walking Dead, from just a whole buttload of other <laughs> great uh, movies. She, I mean, what's that count on there? I forget how, what was the count? What, uh, 59. 59 IMDb credits to her name. Um, and as I always say, when she was on Walking Dead, yeah, she was his girlfriend and she got it. She got it. But uh, Alexander Breckenridge is coming in and... We'll be at the Scarefest. That was one of our that was one of our ones we were keeping in our pocket. But sorry we can't get Den Dennis. It didn't work out. 
I do want to go ahead and I don't believe these are sold out yet. They haven't told me otherwise. Brett Wagner's um, limited edition sledgehammers signed and numbered. Uh, so you can get those. Go to the ticket page. Go down to add-ons. And you can still get, uh, they still had some of those left. Oops. The the podcast. Talk, Talk scary. scary to me. I remember that part. Um, Talk scary to me live. We'll be at Scarefest. So you still have tickets for that. And um, yeah, beautiful girls in lingerie. How can you go wrong? Central Kentucky Mystical Market coming up next weekend, September 30th and October 1st. Lexington's premier monthly psychic and holistic event. And I will be there doing really bad tarot readings after I do something else. So I might be a little bit late. But anyway, that's at the Clarion Inn on Newtown Pike, just as you get in Lexington, a host hotel of the Scarefest. And it's in the Paddock Ballroom. Ballroom. I always forget the name of that. And while we're talking about me, I will do my Sleepaway Camp cosplay. If I reach, actually, I'm doing it now, but I'm only doing it with the cutoff shirt if I hit 50 people. I'm at 30 right now. I'm at 30 people right now subscribing to my Patreon project. It's as cheap as a dollar. It's actually as cheap as free. You just don't get to see everything, but you get a little email announcement whenever I post something. Point is, for a dollar a month, you can see me at Scarefest do the most 80s douchebag cosplay imaginable. To celebrate Sleepaway Camp. And if I get 100 subscribers by Scarefest, I will do it. Terrence Muncie has offered to draw a tramp stamp on my back. And I will do it with a tramp stamp at 100 people. That's at patreon.com slash Scarefest Radio. Patreon.com slash Scarefest Radio. And the reason I'll be late for the mystical market. I'm running my first ever in my entire life 5K. That's right. I smoked for 40 years. I had a heart attack. And now I'm going to run a 5K just because I like being a dick about it. <laughs> Back to my guest. Well, good luck. <laughs> um, somebody the other day uh, gave me this, run fast. And I said, you, I, all I heard was don't die. So that's, <laughs> you know, that's pretty much, pretty much where I am. Um, I have no illusions of winning, but I do want to survive the effort. Uh, okay. Uh, I was going to, um, Talk about one of your movies and not hers. Had the wrong page pulled up. Okay, we're on Creep Show. Um, okay, on, on the part of the corpse, did uh, was that something that uh, George called you and said, "Oh, I've got the perfect part for you"? Or <laughs> actually, it wasn't George that called me. It was uh, Tom Savini that called me. Uh, and the reason was um, at that point in time. Um, I, I was a rather slender fellow, uh, uh over the years that's changed, of course. It doesn't changed. it to all of us. <laughs> um, but, uh, Tom called me and asked me to do it. And, uh, of course I said yes. So, um, I was able to work, uh, two weeks. And I think I just kind of spoke to that a little bit, um, mm -hmm. with Joanna and, um, so it was uh, it was Tom that, that gave me the call, and uh, I had a great time. I, the women that I worked with um, that I had to kill, <laughs> uh, uh, like Vivica Linfers, who is was one of the one of the best people and actors I'd ever come across ever. Uh, she was an absolutely delight, an absolute delight, and uh, worked her little tail off, man. She was up for anything. She crawled all, all over that ground and had no problem doing it. Uh, she, was, uh, she was just a wonderful, wonderful lady. Uh, Carrie Nye as well. Uh, you may know Carrie was married to um, Dick Cabot. And um, so I met Carrie and uh, was uh, happy to carry her head on a plate uh, <laughs> at the end. Uh, I, I actually did a play with Carrie. I stage managed a play with Carrie that uh, she came to do in Pittsburgh uh, with a mentor of mine, Tom Thomas, 
who wrote a play about 30 years after the um, importance of being earnest. And um, uh, she came in uh, and, and did a play there. And uh, we had another wonderful time doing that as well. But um, I love doing Creep Show. And uh, I, in fact, it's probably one of those characters um, that, is, that, that is kind of beloved <laughs> by the fans today. They really, love, they really love Dead Nate, you know? It, it's memorable. And I, it's I, I, I have no idea how long it's been since I, I've seen that movie. I watched it again in preparation yeah. for tonight. But I do, that was one, that movie, I remembered. Right. Now, like, you know, everybody in the chat room knows, I, back in the early 80s, I was dry humping on some girl in the back of the pickup truck. Um, <laughs> so at, at the drive-in theater, I have, no, I, well, most of these movies. We won't go too far into that. Well, like I said, it was dry humping. It was, it was PG rated. <laughs> um, the, uh, but like now, Day of the Dead, honestly, I don't. I do not remember that in theaters at all. Um, mm. I'll just I'll now watch it on VCR some at some yeah. point, but yeah. not that uh, Creep Show. I remember, and I I was watching, and it's funny though. It's been long enough when I was watching Creep Show. I would remember big chunks of it, but um, it was almost like watching it for the first time because I couldn't remember how any of the segments ended. Um, except uh, the the monster in the box. Now that one, for some reason, I, I remember I remember that segment from beginning to end. But the yeah, rest yeah. of it, it, it was it was it was fun to watch, and it looked like that would be the a fun type of part to play. Yeah, it was. I mean, not you're talking about the monster in the box. No, I'm talking about your part now. Uh, oh, the, yeah. the corpse. It, yeah, it was fun. Um, now the. I, yeah, I enjoyed myself immensely. I got to kill Ed Harris too, so you know, what's <laughs> wrong about that? <laughs> yeah, because he had to kill himself in the other movie that you were in. Right. Yeah. yeah, I got to work with George, with, uh, with 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 him twice, Night Riders and Creep Show. Now, I do I have made a note here? It doesn't really, unless you want to put a word in for me. If uh, if it, if Tom ever needs somebody to play Maggot Face, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem whatsoever. Well, we'll give him your number. Okay, Joanna, he, back to you. He'll, he'll be there, uh, you know, in a in a month. <laughs> Are we back to me? Back to Same you, baby. Time. Okay, I was laughing. My bad. No. So, I guess you briefly talked about, I guess, how you were doing plays, and then I guess George saw a role that you played, and then he offered you. Um, Martin, correct, or am I off? That's, that's correct. Yeah, I was, I was a senior in college. I was a little older because I had, I didn't start college till I was twenty three. Um, I was in the army for three years prior to that, and um, so uh, I was twenty seven when, when I shot Martin. And um, George saw me in a play, liked what I was doing offered me a role he had to do a rewrite he told me he had actually the character was to be an older character than than it than martin turned out to be uh so after seeing me i was uh, i was asked if i would do it and i said absolutely a young actor you know needing a job right out of college you know um so that's how that came about um, did I answer the whole question? <laughs> yes, no, and I was just wondering, like, for a while, did you go back and forth between, you know, doing films with George and then also still go doing Broadway, or did you just completely just done oh, with, you know? Oddly enough, oddly enough, um, I, I did both from the time I shot Martin to the last movie that I made with George, which I think was uh, The Dark Half uh, in the 90s. Um, I, would, I would come back and forth from New York and uh, the Playhouse, uh, which was both my collegiate home and my professional home as an actor 
and a director. And ultimately, I became a uh, I became a teacher, uh, unbeknownst to me <laughs> as a dream. <laughs> um, I uh, I ended up teaching uh, for thirty six years, and at the same time doing plays as an actor and a director. Um, once the nineties hit, I was more director than actor, uh, which I liked a lot more to be honest <laughs> um but um i did both uh i kept my theater uh my in fact i just i just today um got uh i i just today retired from equity um and uh, i'm looking forward to uh never being on stage again <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, but I did both for a long time. I would come back to Pittsburgh and do a play, and then George was doing a movie, and so I would work on the movie as well, and then go back to New York. You know, so it was, um, I was pretty lucky in those days. Yeah, pretty fortunate. I wish I'd retained the money. I <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think you can see my puppy now. Yeah. Yes, what's the puppy's puppy. name? His name is Junior. Oh. And he's really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> As he's going to start to prove here in a minute or two, I think. Uh, because he will get up all over the top of me and I can't handle him. He's too, <laughs> too much. But he's a boxer. He's seven months old. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's, oh, boy. That's, that's like early teens, toddler stage, somewhere oh in there. God. It's, it's, a, it's, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I, I just signed up with a new trainer for him and me. Um, and so uh, he's in much need of, of, of training. Um, <laughs> and I may have, <laughs> I may, I may have to move in a couple of seconds. <laughs> oh, he's a sweetie. Yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah, I did a lot of, I did both, you know, um, but the stage has really been, you know, <laughs> my place uh, for most of my life. I started acting when I was 10 in community theater. So um, I'm 74 now. So that tells you a little something <laughs> about uh, my love of theater. And I was just lucky. I was lucky with George, you know. Um, we had a great relationship, and um, he was such a good guy to work with and a good friend. So um, I was always with family, whether it be on stage or uh, in the movies. And most of the people that I worked uh, uh, with in, in George's films um, worked with him throughout. You know, Tom and I worked on all of the productions that uh, George did, or Tom mostly did more than I did, certainly. But um, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I can't, can't do it. Hold on, one second. So That's sorry. all right. We'll we we'll give <laughs> you a moment. We'll go ahead and take our commercial break. Go ahead oh, and pull that good, up. Good, we're good. I'll we're come on back. time anyway. I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. There's a reason I keep the door to the studio wow. shut, just so you know. Spiritmechanics.com, spiritmechanics.com. They now have a brick and mortar. The Missing Elements Shop at 1018 East New Circle Road, 1018 East New Circle Road in Lexington. The one stop shop for spirit mechanics, Stevens Healing Vibrations and Metaphysical Supplies. They offer books, divination, and altar supplies, tarot, and oracle decks. And very soon, the West Forsyth Meditation Candle. Um, seriously, give them a try. Check out Stephen's Healing Vibrations. He uses, he's a sound healer. He uses tuning forks, singing bowls, that kind of stuff. And it doesn't sound like it would work. But I'm telling you, I tried it last year. Uh, when they were, uh, first time they were uh, moving to um, a brick and mortar. First try at that. And I want to tell you. 
I was damned impressed. SpiritMechanics.com. Check them out online for all of your metaphysical and spiritual needs. Now for Bonehead Weekly. Hey, Scarefest fans, this week it's Joe Lewis, whose hair is a little goofy for some odd reason, here to talk about a new movie, a new horror film that's on Netflix called Run, Run, Rabbit, Run, Run, Rabbit, Run. It's an Australian film written by women, directed by women, starring women. And I like that part of it. I like the mood of it. I like the acting. It's all well acted, it's directed, lighting. God, it's so boring. <laughs> oh, it's so boring. So basically what it is, is this this doctor, her and her husband are divorced. She only has the one daughter who's turning seven. And she starts asking about her grandmother. And she clearly doesn't want to have anything to do with her grandmother. And her dad, the main character's dad, the little girl's grandfather, has just passed away. And something's going on with the girl because she's starting to ask questions about people she didn't know. Apparently, the the mother had a sister when she was younger. And she didn't know her and she disappeared and it strained the relationship between her and her mother so they don't talk because I guess they were playing together and she got blamed for it and she never came back and her mom has waited till now she's just crazy or has dementia in a home and it's just waited around looking, waiting for her daughter to show back up, which I kind of completely understand. And now this lady is having problems with because her daughter's asking questions about her dead sister that she shouldn't know about or the other lady's dead sister it's kind of convoluted and it's it's these new horror films where they don't have any money they want to do all mood and atmosphere and i get that i mean that that horror films are about that but you got to make them interesting you got to make them compelling and this took me three nights to get through this is it awful no it's it's well made it just i just don't care i don't care about anybody in the movie it gets boring to me there's nothing that makes you it's not compelling right like and then you figure out oh towards the end of it spoiler alert i'm going to go ahead and do it i don't care that basically she was mean to her little sister she ended up hurting her and then pushed her off a cliff and is the ghost coming back after her daughter who knows it doesn't it's just so so just up here metaphysical and you can have a movie like that, but it needs to be more interesting than this. This, to me, is a great example of what I see a lot of horror films today. This could have been a Twilight Zone. This could have been a 30-minute show. It did not need to be an hour and 40 minutes. So Run, Rabbit, Run on Netflix. I do not recommend it. It's not a terrible movie. It is very well acted, but it is boring as hell and uninteresting. So... Do not go out and see Run Rabbit Run on Netflix 2023's Run Rabbit Run from Australia. Sorry, guys. I can't recommend it. This has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Week. Joe hates everything. Everybody. <laughs> we're, we're back with uh, John Amplis. Uh, Joanna, our newest co-host, is sitting in with us tonight. Um, okay. Now, I'm going to touch on what might be a sore spot, John. And if it's not, it should be. Potent Media's Sugar Skull Girls. Ah, uh, yeah. You kind of walked. Yeah. You you, <laughs> you, you kind of took an easy walk in the park on that one, John. Well, pretty easy indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't quite understand it to be honest. Um, <laughs> I I just did what I was told, kind of told to do. I met him at a convention. And a nice guy um, asked me if I would be involved in this little movie. I said, yes. Um, I went to wherever it was shot, I think New Jersey. Uh, did, did three or four days uh, and went home. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I honestly, I honestly didn't uh, get it. Um, I hope <laughs> it actually, honestly, my, my, big, <laughs> my biggest complaint is uh, that I don't know why it was called Sugar Skull Girls. Oh, I, I, I'm there, not, I'm not sure. to, to me, that implies sugar skull makeup, of which there was none. 
Do you remember the woman, um, uh, the other, there was another actress, there, uh, not, uh, not other actress, but another actor um, uh, in the film, Her, I can't remember her name, but she was on, um, she was on a TV program, Laverne and Shirley, I believe, uh, and played a neighbor on Laverne and Shirley. Well, she was in the movie with me. Well, that, okay, uh, now, the only one I saw besides the the teeny boppers was Leslie Easterbrook. Yes. That's okay. Me. Yes, thank you. I have a terrible mind for, for names. And I can't believe I'll I pulled it out of my face. butt. I'll be honest with you. I'll remember your face, but I will not remember your <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah, Leslie Easterbrook. She was nice. She was swell. I loved her. She, I, and I like the people too. I like the director, and I like all the people that were involved in it. Um, I just didn't. I, I there wasn't much for me to do in the movie. It seemed to me. No, that's what you you were kind of a walk on, dude. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I felt. <too. laughs> you know, but I, I, I was doing I was doing I was doing a guy a favor, so uh, it's all right. Once again, working actor. What are you going to do, right? That's right. Um, hey, I'm sorry to hear about, uh, what's his name that dropped out? Dennis? Uh, uh, yeah, I love him. He's a great actor. We, ha we had a good response when we announced him. There were a lot of people excited yeah. about him. Um, so I, he, he was a dis it was a disappointment. But oh, he, he can do anything, this guy. Mm -hmm. He's terrific. I don't know him, but I, I I like his work. You know, he's always excellent. But um, yeah, the only thing, I, the part they caught me was he had to do a play. Now you know, of course, I've been in that situation. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, now so we had uh, he. We're actually considering how many we celebrities we have in a normal year, let alone this year. We're doing pretty good. We're we have not had the cancellations that um, conventions expect at this mm -hmm. stage of the game. Um, it looks like a great lineup. My goodness, yeah. I oh, yeah, I ain't gonna say that because Brand, Brandon's here. starting to get smug about it. You're getting smug about it. Brandon <laughs> is the owner. Yeah, he's starting to pat himself on the back too much. He should pat himself <laughs> on the back for goodness' sake. He's he's a Day of the Dead fan, for goodness sake. So, what could be wrong about that? Um, I don't want to, well, I don't get too deep in anything because we're at the end of the show. Uh, now, Day of the Dead, of course, we've devoted this entire month to Day of the Dead. Right. Um, now, this is one thing. I have not been in a movie. Joanne has. She's at least done a movie short. Uh, may, I don't know what all she does. Hell, I don't keep up with her. But um, Tom Savini's effects are very, very visceral on screen. When you're standing in the room with that stuff. It's just as visceral. That's what the question was. Does it make you kind of cringe, some of the stuff he pulls off? Yeah, it is just as visceral. There's a story. Um, I wasn't involved with the shooting of it. Um, the end scene with Joe Pilato uh, uh, getting his, getting torn apart. Um, mm -hmm. You remember that. It's hard to forget. Um, and there's all of this in uh, intestines and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> falling out. Uh, they were they were like pigs' intestines and livers and and real animal um, uh, viscera, uh, and had been left in a refrigerator. And um, the the electricity, as I'm told, went off during a short hiatus, and all of it rotted. <laughs> And they used it. Whoa. And so Joe and the um, and the gang <laughs> had, 
had to had to be around that, touch that, use that in terms of uh, getting the shot they needed to pull Joe apart. So I understand it was a pretty disgusting day, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> I guess it should have dawned on me that those were animal intestines because you can't just go to like Walmart and buy intestines. That's what they were. Yeah, that's what they were. Oh. Hey, let's do mention Martin though, okay? Before the night is over. Did we not do that? Did we do that already? <laughs> Martin the movie? Yeah, Martin the movie. That's what I led the show with. Oh, uh, see. Short I mean, we could talk right? about all the nudie scenes if you want. You know, <laughs> you know what I want to talk about what? is the new 4K uh, uh, Second Sight um, uh, uh, DVD that's out, Blue Blu-ray that's out uh, that came out this year. Um, it's it's outstanding. Um, it's the color of it is gorgeous mike bornick mm -hmm. did all the color timing on it it's a uk it's a uk group called second sight and they um they have this uh blu-ray out that is that must be seen so i wanted to give that a plug so fans have an opportunity to um if they're willing and if they're interested in martin that's the that's the DVD you want, um, and it comes in a it comes in a, a four set package. It has some wonderful extras and interviews and all of that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to get that out there to um, make sure fans know that it's available. And once again, it's a UK product called Second Sight. Um, I. Honestly, I was surprised how good the quality was because understand before I watched this, I watched Toxic Zombies. So I was afraid, and everybody, what I'm talking about there, Toxic Zombies, there's nothing wrong with the movie per se. Um, <laughs> okay. Look, I'm trying to be kind, John. I hope you get All a dollar right. every time somebody watches that movie. Um, All right. <laughs> but... <laughs> what they've done, and I was telling the problem with it, and it's streaming, it was on Tubi, I think. But anyway, they it's obvious they at some point someone reconfigured, trimmed, I guess whatever you want to call it, this movie to be played on a 1985 television in a VCR, in other words. And that four by three format, so they took by the sixteen by nine movie screen cut off the ends, and made it that. But it looks like to stream it now, what they've done is they've just stuck that damn tape back in the VCR and played it back to DVD. The quality, the it, you can just... I know when that movie was made, it was not made for straight to DVD, you know, or VCR. You know how I know that? They hadn't been invented yet. Exactly. So, so there were some quality loss there. So that was my biggest disappointment in that movie was yeah. it was just it's it was almost painful it's not my biggest disappointment but it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> my biggest disappointment is that i'm in it <laughs> it was a meaty little part i was i'm not yes it was it was uh i think i was too young for it at least i think yeah I okay was, yeah uh, well I yeah because I, I think i looked much too young for it. i was old enough but I don't think I was, I don't think I was the right person. I guess that's arguable, but okay, everybody, he plays a, um, do they ever even say what kind of federal agent it's? No, they just said, probably not. Probably <laughs> federal, probably, probably, no, I don't think so. <laughs> now, okay, now if you want a critique of the actual writing of the movie, um, okay, everybody, what it is, they, they, to kill off a pot crop, they spray this experimental um, herbicide that the yes. side effects are apparently turn your ass into flesh-eating zombies. Same so. Now, 
The funny part is, the reason they use that is it would take too long to go to the fucking feed store and buy some WD... Uh, 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 WD yeah, no. I know what you're saying. <laughs> some yeah, actual they, weed killer. They could have done that, sure. sure. So that to me, that was just this lot. That's one of those little logical flaws in a movie that just rips my heart out because I, I'm like, okay, back then you would have went to Tom's Hardware or Bob's Feed Store and bought weed killer. And but it's it's not that they couldn't have done that. It's that they claimed it would take too long. But the zombie <laughs> stuff, we got we can load that right up. So anyway, okay. uh, but it is streaming. You should watch it. Maybe they'll give him a nickel. Who knows? All right. I won't, <laughs> no, I won't get anything out of it. <laughs> but uh, everybody, okay, we're at the end of the episode. Uh, I want to thank uh, John for coming on tonight. I hope you had fun, John. I did indeed. Thank you so much for having me. And everybody, of course, Joanna is our junior co-host. You can see her again in about a month. She will be on the black carpet escorting celebrities down the runway, and then she gets to play Booth Babe. She gets to play Booth Babe all weekend. Yay. Her, Katie, and Claire. I'm just going to have the best booth ever this year. So So everybody, uh, tune in next week. We've got Jarleth Conroy. We got one more oh, my man, Day Charlotte. of the Dead. Uh, Jarleth is the best. So he will be here next week, and we'll see you then. <laughs>